Welcome to EdTech Du Jour. Today I'm speaking with James Bryan Smith about how group work relates to student to student engagement and the overall success of course design. So why do so many people dislike group work? I know that when I was a participant in that, I had a lot of anxiety and I always feared that I'd get that one person in my group who'd be the loser or who wouldn't participate. And then I was also worried about getting a group grade and not uh, being recognized for my individual contributions. So today we wanna think about why students should learn in groups and how that benefits them and how they can collaborate towards group achievements. And we know that group work is an essential skill to develop for the workforce because in the real world, you collaborate on projects and students tend to feel invested in a class environment when they know the purpose of the group work and they believe in the purpose. And James, how do you coach students to success in your group projects? Well, I've found in my experience that uh, an essential place to begin with is looking at learning styles and personality types. Now, there's a variety of resources you can go to that address personality types, such as the color code personality type, but uh, a tried and true one is the Myers-Briggs or Young Typology. And these are general orientations that might guide us to know what roles we'd be most successful in working collaboratively. So a general orientation, as we all know, is extroversion or introversion. And that is essentially, am I externally oriented, socially speaking, or do I prefer to work on my own, study independently? Now, how do we learn or obtain information? This is either sensing or intuition. And sensing is all about the five senses and we acquire information that way, whereas intuition is more concerned with abstract possibilities and connecting seemingly unrelated pieces of information. But more importantly for group work is how do we make decisions? Do we do it scientifically and rationally? This would be the thinking orientation. Or is it more about independently understanding people and the feelings associated? Additionally, what is our communication orientation? Now, most often in group work and collaborative assignments, you're gonna find yourself using two different kinds of communication styles, both transactional and transformational. Transactional is content-oriented. What is the information? What are the concepts that we are trying to convey here? And likewise, transformational is more concerned with the people and processes involved in the projects. So after addressing some of these personality types, I like to break the project down into phases. And actually, Melissa, didn't Faculty Focus uh, publish an article on this? Yes, it was good timing since we were planning this discussion. Dr. Hung wrote an article about students writing coattails during group work and five steps to avoid that problem. And the first thing she describes is to design the project with the students to work in phases and require that students check in at various points instead of just assigning it, hoping everyone's on track. Um, also allowing the students the freedom to choose topics that interest them. So maybe we've talked about this before, not prescribing 100% what each step of the project is, but allowing them some freedom with choices. Third, ask the students to submit a reflection on his or her portion of the group work, maybe the process and the product. Allowing students to get to know each other and establish group norms. And really for them to understand what the big picture is. Clearly identify the roles, design, design effective group work activities, and then help them understand why it's meaningful and create action plans for success. And Focusing on achievement-based outcomes, what is the product or the service proposal, as opposed to just focusing on the presentation. And we've talked about this before, it's helpful for students to understand it's not all about the presentation. It's about the work and the process and what you're developing and the teamwork is the goal instead of the presentation. And James, in your courses, how do you prepare students to work well together? Well, going off of what I mentioned earlier about the person, 
personality types and figuring out what are the best group roles for each individual participating collaboratively, I typically start out with a small lecture or um, a, a small getting to know each other section. And in this phase, what we would do is we would look at the five stages of team development um, as first introduced by Tuckman and later amended by Marianne Jensen back in the 70s. So the first stage when forming a group is just that, it's forming. And this is about our orientation, orientation to the tasks at hand and orientation to the personalities making up the group itself. The next stage that we would move into is storming. And this is typically characterized by conflict, competition, um, overall discomfort, getting to know one another, figuring out how best we can work uh, with each other among um, a group. Um, this leads naturally into the third stage, which is norming, and this is where we cohere as a group or fail to cohere as a group. So it's about establishing these roles, establishing norms within the group, understanding how we're going to function, the processes by which we're going to execute whatever our collaborative tasks are. And then stage four is just that. It's the execution stage. This is where we perform the group work, where we have our meetings, where we've moved past brainstorming and we have actionable agendas and we begin working towards whatever the end result or outcome desired is. Now, the last stage, again, uh, introduced by Marianne Jensen in 77 is adjourning. Um, a lot of times, depending on the duration of the group work or, or the project that we're working on, this can uh, very frequently be a difficult stage because we have to separate as a group. This is when analysis of our performance would step in. This would be um, assuming our typical day-to-day -day activities working independently of each other. And as you can see by the slide here, there are certain characteristics that um, inform each of these five phases or stages of working within a group. And I like to orient students into group work by kind of going over this and letting them work through these stages together. Um, I was gonna say, it's a, it's a great uh, skill to acquire for the workforce. And we keep taking it back to how is this relevant? Because in a work environment, no matter where you work, there are people that your personality is different. Um, some people you like better than others. You have to figure out how can you not only get along, but how you can be productive in that environment together. Absolutely. Um, and I'm curious, Melissa, how do you organize, track, and all together grade and assess um, your students' group work and collaborative assignments? Well, as you can see from these slides, there are many forms of technology that can show you the footprints of student involvement in organization. So Padlet is a good one, Lino, and I think of those as like sticky notes. So the group gets together, and this isn't a presentation, this is just their brainstorming. Um, I can see if you're a student who's just saying, great idea, or if you're really contributing something to the discussion. Also Google Docs, we know that most people are very familiar with that, and that is a really transparent way to organize information and to look for student involvement. And then I use the LMS to randomize groups. Um, I think it's really important to incorporate technology, but not to let that be the focus. A lot of students get lost in, well, I don't know how to do a Prezi or a PowerPoint. And then again, they're losing focus on the product or the process. And also, I encourage people not to grade as a group. Instead, assess individual contributions. And I think you can do this easily when you have a rubric or maybe just like you might do an introduction video for your course to do a video to help students really know what you're looking for and what the learning outcomes are. And sometimes when they hear you say it, they're not as nervous as reading it in black and white and figuring out, oh, what did they mean by that? So you can see that uh, most LMSs you can embed and record a presentation. So again, it's not really about if you're using Canvas or Moodle, Desire to Learn, Blackboard. Um, and one example where I've seen a professor that I worked with, Dr. Chris Amos at University of West Florida, he was very successful in using Collaborate and Illuminate for his students to present their group projects. And it was a curriculum course, and he had each group um, they were randomized in Blackboard, and then they were assigned groups, and they had to define their own roles. So they defined their roles, 
and then they chunked the information. They decided how they would present and put together the PowerPoint, and they archived it in Illuminate. And then each group went in and they reviewed and assessed the other groups and gave feedback, and they were also able to reflect on their own process and product. The great thing with that example is that when each student left the course, they had PowerPoints on each concept from each chapter that they could actually use um, going forward. So as you can see, there are a lot of examples, there's research, there's resources and tools that can help you design and deliver effective online group projects. And we hope that some of these tips were helpful today.